Did you know the C sharp was inspired by musical notation whereby sharp symbol indicates that the written note should be made a semi note higher in pitch? Did you know C sharp was initially to be named as cool that is C like object oriented language but Microsoft chose not to use due to trademark reasons? Did you know? Hazelsberg, the C sharp principal designer and a lead architect at Microsoft was previously involved with design of Turbo Pascal. Did you know James Gosling who created Java language called C sharp as an imitation of Java? Did you know C sharp has gone through its great journey from version 1.0 to 12.0 and falls in first top 10 programming languages used by developers worldwide? Did you know C sharp ranks in top 10 popular languages? and having 27.62% participation in the market. We are going to have answers to all of your questions on .NET Language C Sharp. From the evolvement of its gradual maturity, we are going to touch upon all the important stops of C Sharp towards its journey. So let's go. So first of all, I'll be talking a little of introduction of C Sharp and then I will go through the version history right from 1.0 to 12.0. I will try to discuss a little bit of each version's uh, history and uh, not in detail, but the brief of each of the features that will be coming in the in the versions. Talking about the uh, language, it's a general purpose and it's a high level language designed and developed by, you know, originally by Microsoft and especially contribution of Anders Hazelberg. It is also approved by ECMA, which is called as European Computer Manufacturer Association. It is considered to be the most popular language on .NET platform, and it is now used as a cross-platform language and favorite of millions of developers. Almost 27.62% of developers worldwide are using as per the data received in 2023. Language history has been talked about when 1.0 came in January 2002 with the framework 1.0 and likewise we started getting the versions and the frameworks like say in this we can say the 5.0 that came in August 2012 and it was with version 4.5. You have noticed that version 6 when came this was this was used over framework version 4.6 as well as the core 1.0 and 1.0. One as well. The 8.0 onwards, we have we have core .NET core. So 8.0 came in 2019, and the core 3.0 and 3.1 was used as a frame. I mean dot .NET, and 9.0 with 5.0 dot .NET, which came in 2020, and 10.0 is 2021, and .NET 6.0. The latest that we have at the time video is being recorded is 12.0 which came in November 2023 and which is at the top of .NET 8.0, right? So let's go and see all the versions one by one. Talking about 1.0, the major features that came in 1.0, all basics feature, we had classes, we have structs, we have interfaces, events, properties, and delegates. I think these are all very common terms and you are all aware of this fact. So I'm just moving ahead for version 2.0 now. Version 2.0 is in 2005, came with generics where we could write uh, collections, generics. So, I mean, irrespective of data types, we can write in a generic way. We had partial types, wherein types means the classes could have partial. I mean, you can spend uh, a class into multiple files. So, this is a partial class. We could have anonymous method where the methods didn't have name. And then you can write directly the body. We had iterators, and the iterators allows to traverse to a collection without exposing its underlying representation that came in 2.0. We had nullable types where types could be made nullable where let's say if you are making integer nullable so you can also store null values to integer that's what it's called nullable types. We had private status property and these were basically restricts the ability to update the value of private fields to the internal code of the class. Right, we have covariance and co contravariance. So the covariance and contravariance, the, it enables implicit reference conversion for arrays types, delegate types, and generic types arguments. Covariance preserves assignments, compatibility, and contravariance reverses it. So that's where the features that came in 2.0. We had a static classes, 
So if you are talking about a static classes where a class is declared as static, it is sealed, abstract, and no instance members can be overridden or declared. So these all features were covered in 2.0. Moving to 3.0, we had implicit types, local variable. So those variables which are declared without specifying the .NET, uh, ex, uh, .NET type explicitly, for example, if you write val, where, so where can be implicit uh, type. Object in collection initializer. So while creating or instantiating object, some can be initialized that is called object or collection initialization that came in 3.0. We have anonymous types that types would be anonymous with no names. We have extension methods, a method you can extend actually. So you have a, let's say two string method, you can extend it and then you can put more functionality adding to it. We have query expression in 3.0 consisted of a set of clauses written in declarative syntax, similar to transject SQL or X query. That was another improvement. We had Lambda expression. You could actually write SQLite expression and you can collect the data and you can do lots of operations on that. That is Lambda expression. We had expression trees. So this represents the code in a tree-like format where an each node of the node is an expression. So these were the quick features of 3.0 that came in 2007. And we had partial methods as well, a method that spans in more than one file. So we can write or more than one places that can be a partial method. Going to the 4.0, we had something called dynamic binding, wherein this is also called late binding. So basically, it it's, comes under the concept of if you are deriving the features and if your drive class are trying to do something, so you can do decide at the late at while runtime. That is what it is called dynamic binding. That is the one feature that came. Names and optional arguments. So names and optional arguments actually are they are matching by its name. So the arguments are matching by its name rather than its position in a parameter list. Optional arguments enables you to omit the argument for the same parameter as well. So this is a feature. We have generic co and contra. We have already discussed that became generic here. We had embedded interop types. This allows you to include an attribute information that is normally stored in a primary interop assembly that is called PIA in EXE or DLL. That was the feature in 4.0. Talking about the 5.0 features, the first feature is async feature. Async feature basically allows developers to write asynchronous code as it is written as synchronous. So this is a, a big improvement in C Sharp 5.0. We had a caller information. So this instructs compiler to feed the information obtained from caller source code in the parameters default. And these were the features available in 5.0. Going ahead to 6.0, that in 2017, we have a static imports. Using a static directive, a static members and nested types can be accessed without specifying the type name. We have ex exception filter. So if you have like catch block, wherein you can provide some uh, expression, uh, uh, we, we can we can provide a when keyword in the exception, uh, and then in catch block, and based on that the filtration can be auto pro auto property initializer. So basically, the property initializers can be done automatically. We had expression bodied members. So expression bodied members provide a minimal and concise syntax to define properties and methods. We have null propagator. A null propagator is basically a null conditional operator applies to member access. So we have question mark dot or question mark box bracket operation. So these all operations can be done using the null propagator. We have string interpolation. So we have called a data dollar character identifies the string and literals and interpolated strings. So we have name of operator. So name of operator expression produces the name of variable type of member or as its string constant. So these were features there in there in 6.0. Like talking about 7.0 2017, we have out variable. So we used to have out variable earlier, but when you were having the out variable, it has to be declare outside i mean but here in 7.0 uh, you can declare the place where it is being used you, you can declare outside as well uh, uh, so basically prior to 7.0 the out variables were to be declared 
first and then to be used as a out part in 70 onwards this need not to be declared earlier so i can right away use there by the time of using we have tuples so tuples feature provides concise syntax of group multiple data elements in lightweight data structure we have pattern matching so pattern matching is a technique where you test an expression to define if it has certain characteristic we have local functions so local functions are nothing but the methods of type that are nested in another member and they can only be called from their container member we have ref calls ref locals where you declare a local variable and add the ref keyword this becomes ref locals and we have ref return as well the similar we have discards so discards are placeholders variable and are intentionally unused in the application discards are uh equivalent to unassigned variables they don't have the value but they are used in some scenario so these were the major features of 70 i mean you have throw expressions as well in in which you can have expression i mean what uh, in in throwing exceptions talking about 8.0 that is in 2019 read only instance members so you can specify read only instance member here we have default interface method so usually the interfaces don't have implemented methods or methods with their body but now we can have some methods with a default body this is called default interface method using declaration so we have we can have a using statement ensures that correct use of file disposable instance so basically if you are let's say creating a file object so uh, you can put it in within using so what will happen it is within that scope and if it goes above that or beyond that scope then this will be disposed of so it makes sure that i disposable instance is in place static local functions so local functions are the method or type that are nested in another member they can only be called from their containing member so they are static local functions disposable ref structs so you can use a ref modifier to declaration of a struct type so instant of a ref uh, struct type allocates the it allocates on the stack and cannot escape to manage the, the manage heap we have nullable reference types so reference types also can be nullable we have indexation ranges so we have dot dot operator which basically can be used for indexation ranges unmanaged constructed types so where clause in generic definition that we can use that is unmanaged constructed types so these were all almost features that we pretty much covered or c sharp 8.0 talking about c sharp 9.0 in 2020 we have records so you can use the records modifier to define a reference type of uh, a pro provide built-in functionality in encapsulating data we have init only property wherein init keyword can be used to property or methods so the init only setter assigns a value to a property to our indexer uh, element only during the object constructions we have top level statements you don't have to explicitly include a main method in console application project instead you can use the top level statement feature to minimize the code you have to write we have init assessor and read only fields with expression value based equality and and and, and these are all features of Talking about C sharp 10 in 2021, we have record structs. So you can declare value type records using a record struct, a read only struct. And uh, you can now clarify that the record is reference type with record class declaration. We have global using directive. You can add a global modifier to any using directive to instruct the compiler that the directive applies to all the source file in the compilation. We have file scope namespace. So you can also use a new form of namespace declaration that is specific to your file. We have extended property pattern. So C sharp 10 onwards, you can reference nested properties, a property within other property. So that is what we had Lambda expression improvements. So there, there are some inclusion of natural types, return type may be declared and the Lambda can also be uh, the attributes can also be applied on the lambdas we have enhancement in line pragma so c sharp supports a new format of line pragma so these were a couple of uh, new features that is available with the c sharp along with assignment and declaration in the same disconstruction so basically 
uh, while 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 declaring and so assignment can be done at the same place. Talking about C sharp 11, that is in 2012, uh, 2022. Talking about C sharp 11, that came in 2022. Raw string literal. The raw string literal can contain arbitrary text, including white space, new lines, embedded codes, and other special character without requiring escape sequences. We have generic math support. So there are several language features that enable generic math support. We have generic attributes. So you can also declare a generic class whose base class is system attribute. You have UTF-8 string literals. So you can specify UTF-8 suffix to string literals to specify UTF-8 character encoding. You have new lines in string interpolation. So you have something called uh, everything that you write inside uh, starting curly brace and curly curly brace characters for a string interpolation. Now you can write multiple lines between these. So this is called new lines in string interpolation. List patterns. So list patterns extend patterns matching to match sequence of elements in the list or array. We have five local types beginning C sharp 11. You can use the file access modifier to create a type whose visibility is within the within the scope of the source file only. And we have required methods. So you can add a require modifier to properties or methods or fields that enforces constructor and caller to initialize those values. So these were pretty cool features that is available in C-sharp 11. Let's go to C-sharp 12, which is the current version of C-sharp that came in 2023. Primary constructor is the one. You can create primary constructor in any class or a struct type. Collection expression, a new syntax to specify collection expression, including the spread element and expand any collection. Inline arrays. Inline arrays enable you to create array of fixed size in struct type. Optional parameter in lambda expression. You can define default values for parameters in lambda expression. Ref read only parameters. Ref read only parameters enables clarity to the API and that might be using ref parameters or in parameters. We have alias and types. You can use alias directive to alias any of any type, not just the named types. And we have experimental attribute. This is to for the experimental. So we hope that all we discussed the features of C sharp from 1.0 12.0 zero as pretty much clear to you i understand that they were very quick because the video could have been quite big if 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 we had to cover all the features but each individual features of six c sharp 12 will be covered in coming videos see you in the next video Bye -bye. subscribe for more updates comment or write us at mailtokowithabi at gmail.com thanks for watching